Turning now to the 2024 race, which we were just talking about, Republicans rallying around former President Trump. Mr. Trump received endorsements from four members of the Tennessee congressional delegation after meeting over the weekend in Nashville. That group includes the state's two senators, Marsha Blackburn and Bill Haggerty. And it comes as most of Mr. Trump's so-called rivals for the 2024 Republican nomination continue to tiptoe around criticizing him. Still, we are seeing some early fireworks. The former president has ramped up his attacks on Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for his past support of entitlement reform. And a new response from DeSantis's allies is hitting back at Trump. Take a look. Trump is being attacked by a Democrat prosecutor in New York. So why is he spending millions attacking the Republican governor of Florida? Trump's stealing pages from the Biden Pelosi playbook, repeating lies about Social Security. Joining me now to break down the state of 2024 Republican field is Amy Walter, publisher and editor in chief of the Cook Political Report. Amy, always great to have you. Great to be here. So let me just get your reaction to what we just saw. So here is a group that's allied with Ron DeSantis. That's the key, key. right? We're not hearing that from Ron DeSantis. I mean, does he continue to kind of keep the gloves on, as it were, as it relates to going after Trump? Is there any incentive for him to sharpen his attacks at this point? Um, That's a really excellent point, because remember, we have both the ads that are going up for Donald Trump, which attack Ron DeSantis, also not officially yet with the Trump (laughs) campaign. They're also part of the super PAC. And these are super PAC ads. The one thing that I thought was really interesting in that ad, it did two things, the one that you just showed. One, trying to give some cover to Ron DeSantis. Mm. So it seems pretty clear that the attacks that Trump and Uh, Trump surrogates have had on DeSantis on this issue of entitlements. And when he was in Congress, when DeSantis was in Congress, voting for budgets that made reforms to entitlements, it's taking a toll, which is why they were up there responding, tried to answer back for insulate. But the other thing, the the tagline on the ad is, What happened to Donald Trump? Mm. And I think that is the needle that both DeSantis and those who support DeSantis are going to have to thread because it's not so much about I'm going to be different from Donald Trump or we need to move on from Donald Trump. It's what happened to Donald Trump. He's not the same person that he was in 2016. He's looking out for himself. He's focused on the rearview mirror. He's not focused on the future. It's such a Great point, Amy. And uh, you have to think about 2016, right? And the fact that so many of his rivals didn't want to lay a hand on him because they didn't want to alienate his base. And that turned out to be basically a glide path to the nomination. And I would anticipate that Republicans are struggling with the same dilemma right now, not wanting to anger the Trump base, those voters that they need. And is that the line that you expect DeSantis and others to thread? Or... Do you think they are going to sharpen their attacks at like the first debate? Well, for so this is <laughs> this is a really good point. I, I talked to a couple of strategists about this very thing, and one of them made this point earlier before this ad came on that yes, the the best line of attack against Donald Trump is he's not looking out for you anymore. He's looking out for himself, right? He's so obsessed with the 2020 mm. election, all the things that he's done since then to enrich himself. He's not looking for out for you anymore, but. Your point is a really good one. It's easy to say that or put that in an ad or type that in a press release. Saying that on a debate stage when he's standing right there, (laughs) that is a lot harder. And that's what we're going to find out. And same with Donald Trump. His argument against DeSantis, actually pretty effective about this issue of entitlements. But will he be able to stay on message or will he go into the name calling, which he also really enjoys doing when he gets face to face with people? He sure does. There's no doubt we'll see a whole lot of that. You know, it's interesting. We learned that Mike Pompeo is not going to run. The other thing that really benefited former President Trump in 2016 was a very crowded field. I mean, this field is starting to take shape. We don't want to prejudge it yet. It doesn't look like it's going to be as big as we may have anticipated. That's right. As long as Trump is looking really strong and DeSantis is the only one who seems to be getting any political oxygen, he's the only one in double digits in the polls, if you're an aspiring politician, especially Mm -hmm. a younger one, you say, you know what, maybe 2028 is a better time for me. It's not worth it to do this. But as we know, and again, I talked to a lot of strategists over the last couple of weeks, especially Republicans who have been in presidential campaigns, and they say, remember, there's always somebody in the field that surprises us. Mm. Pete Buttigieg, 
Rick Santorum, right? You, you and right, I can go right, through the right. whole list of yeah, candidates that yeah. were at 2% in the polls and no one was taking them seriously. The two front runners got into rock'em sock'em robot kind of fights yeah. and created an opening for a candidate who was different. I think that's where Tim Scott is it, sort of I was gonna trying say to Tim go, Scott, yeah. Right, which is I'll be the you know, more optimistic. Yeah. I will be someone who's not bruised up from the fighting. I'm going to be one that sort of unites. He talks a lot about uniting America, but also that I could unite the party. So these dynamics are still very fluid, obviously, but I think you're exactly right. The field is going to be a lot smaller, which means that this fight over that, let's call it 60% or so of voters who aren't hardcore Trump, always Trump voters. That's a big pool. It's a lot of it's voters. It's a lot of voters. And the fewer candidates, then you're right, it doesn't get split up in many ways. Very quickly before I let you go, fundraising. The Trump campaign says we're going to have a windfall because of the indictment. You also have Nikki Haley, who her campaign said that they'd raised about 11 million. It was actually over 8 million. Right. right. Um, so that got adjusted a little bit. Um, but what do you make of those figures so far and the fact that, you know, Trump's been raising the most, but it's been pretty flat in terms of what we've seen? The one number we really want to see is Ron DeSantis. Mm. We know what he raised before. We're all waiting for him to announce to see what kind of money he will have in the bank. I think that will be really instructive for what kind of money is out there for a candidate that, again, is not running as an anti-Trump, is well-known, who had gotten a lot of donor support before. But I think you will have individual donors who may end up saying, well... You might not have a lot of money in the bank, but I like you mm. and I'm going to fund a super PAC for you. And as you know, that matters as well as sure what's does. in the bank of the individual yeah. candidates. Amy Walter, thank you so much Great for to be here. setting the table for us on this thank Monday, yes, making us good. smarter. Great to see you as thank always. You. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.